I greet you all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's a joy to be here with you to share with you the word of God. Uh, last uh, episode we saw uh, the Pentecost uh, or we deliberated on that and the coming of the Holy Spirit. <coughs> in this uh, <coughs> episode we will see the leading by the Holy Spirit. Even uh, before we get into that Shall we look to the Lord in prayer? Lord and Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this day. Thank you for your mercy which abounds in our lives, even now, our Father. I pray that will open our hearts and minds to receive your word. Speak to our hearts, O Master. And I pray that your name will be glorified in our lives. And I pray that you will bless this uh, our time when we listen to your word. We ask this in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> the Bible is filled with examples of people being led by the Spirit of God. The leading of the Spirit has always been there. It was a common occurrence for people like uh, David, Elijah, Elisha. God told them, the Spirit of God told them what to do, when to do, and they did exactly when uh, he was, uh, when uh, Elijah was asked to challenge uh, the prophets of Baal, he did it because God told him and he did exactly what uh, God asked him to do and uh, they saw the mighty works of God even as they, um, they were led by the Spirit of God and they did it and it brought uh, glory to God. Uh, Jesus was certainly led by the Spirit. Uh, he did this um, it says he was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil in uh, uh, Matthew 4 1 it says and uh, as our example Jesus depended on the father for everything he did upon this earth and the father led him by the Holy Spirit just as he leads others not only uh, Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit we also see other people being uh, led by the Spirit of God uh, in um, Acts, we see uh, Philip was preaching in Samaria, which was a wonderful thing to, thing to do. There has been a long-standing prejudice against the Samaritans, and God intended the gospel to get to them. As a matter of fact, John 4 records that Jesus purposefully went through Samaria in order to give the living water to the woman at the well. She in turn went and told the men to the city and the whole bunch came out and believed on Christ. Now here's Philip preaching in the same place, Samaria, and uh, having good success. But Acts uh, eight twenty six says, An angel of the Lord spoke to him and told him to go down to a desert uh, road. Angels are ministering spirits. Oh. And uh, they, they advised, uh, they asked uh, Philip to go to the um, uh, desert road, uh, down a desert road. Philip obeys the, uh, and leads the Ethiopian official to the Lord. And immediately after baptizing him in verse uh, 39 of Acts 8, the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away uh, so that the eunuch saw him no more. So we, we see how uh, the Spirit of God is enabling uh, these people. Um, you know, we also see how uh, Paul, Holy Spirit forbade uh, Paul to preach the word in Asia, then would permit him to go into uh, Bithynia. Now there's nothing wrong with preaching in these places. Jesus said in Mark 16, 15, go into all the world and preach, preach to every creature is what he said. So there's nothing wrong in preaching uh, there. The thing was God uh, had somewhere else he wanted Paul to go. There is somewhere else God wanted Paul to go. It's not that they should not preach here, but God restrained him. The Spirit of God restrained him so that he did not have to go there, but he, had, he was led by the Spirit of God to the place he wanted to go, where God wanted him to go. There's a specific place at a specific time where Paul wants, where God wants uh, specific people to go. And that is where uh, 
God wanted to, uh, him to go. So that is why he was restrained from going into, uh, 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 the, uh, to preach the word in Asia. Um, and uh, then we, we also see the Spirit of God enables people with skills. Uh, if uh, you look at uh, 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 the making of the tabernacle, uh, we see um, uh, Bezalel and Ohalia, they were very skilled persons to whom the Lord had given skills and ability to know how to carry out work of constructing the sanctuary um, uh, or to do the work of uh, do the work just as the Lord has commanded. And uh, uh, it also says, uh, Moses said to the Israelites, See, the Lord has cho chosen Bezalel, uh, son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of uh, Judah. And well, he, was, he ha has filled them with the Spirit of God, with wisdom, with understanding, with knowledge, and with all kinds of skills to make artistic designs for work in gold, silver, bronze, to cut and set stones, to work in wood and to engage in all kinds of artistic crafts. Artic, artistic crafts to do work in that, the Spirit of God was needed for them. because they, The Spirit of God directed them. And he had uh, given both him and Ohalia, son of Ahisamak of the tribe of Dan, the ability to teach others. Not only did they have the skill, they, they went about teaching others about this skill. And uh, uh, probably they taught many more people so that they would go and uh, uh, do the work. All kinds of work. Moses introduces these two uh, men whom the Lord chose as project in today's word. It could be called as project managers. Bezalel is from the tribe and uh, of Judah uh, uh, and uh, Ohaliab from Dan. Bezalel, the chief architect and builder, is skilled in working with metals and precious stones. He is said to be filled with the Spirit of God. And we can presume that Ohaliab, his assistant, was also filled. In other words, uh, they were enabled to obey the word of God in doing their God-given tasks by the presence of the Holy Spirit. So here we see the combination of the word and the spirit, which is absolutely essential for the ministries of the people of God. It, if either one is missing, either the word or the spirit, then the people of God are malnourished. God's people are called to be here, not only to be hearers of the word, but then to put it into practice with the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit enables us to practice what, what is said by the word. It brings also the word to life. There are times in our lives when some of the, the words, word of God comes uh, alive in our lives. I mean, even as you are reading, the spirit brings it alive into our hearts. Let me share with you an example. Uh, many years ago, I, was, uh, uh, I had traveled to a place and I was going towards a particular uh, airport. And there were four, uh, four of us were, who were going together. We had booked the flight ahead and uh, we finished our uh, trip and we were coming back. And as we were coming back, uh, the one word which came to my mind again and again is, which it said, trust in God at all times. Trust in God at all times. Now, I was just meditating on this particular verse and uh, we were going towards the airport when a phone call came and they said, your flight has been cancelled. I was shocked because we had put in all our money, but now four of us had been uh, there together and we hardly ha I had hardly any money left uh, to buy a new ticket. So uh, we went to the airport and we said, um, we need, uh, 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 what about the refund? They said, you can collect it in Chennai where you have booked the ticket. Still more shocking. The, there's going to be no refund. And there's no money enough uh, left in my hands to buy a ticket. And there are four of us standing together. All of us had booked the ticket. And suddenly one of the people who uh, traveled with me said, I have enough money. You don't worry about it. So we were happy. At least we had money. So now the next thing to find out was what kind of 
and during this time when the ticket was cancelled this word came to me again and again trust in the lord at all times trust in the lord at all times so i was wondering okay uh, i am trusting let's see what god has for us today and uh, the next thing that happened was they said there was a flight which was slightly earlier uh, to the flight in which we were supposed to have gone and uh, there were there were four tickets available in that and that man had four tickets he generously gave it to us the money so we we gave the money and we got the four tickets for for all four of us the flight which we were supposed to have gone was a one hop flight it went to a particular city stopped for a, about an hour and then it started again but this flight was ahead of time and it was a direct flight to chennai so it was so, it was so beautifully got uh, got us the ticket and when we got down at the airport immediately we went to the counter and said we need a refund we showed the tickets and we said your flight has been cancelled so please give us the refund he gave us the cash and we were able to give it immediately uh, back to the person who gave us the cash for the tickets so beautifully at that at one point of time we were wondering what can happen to us we, we don't have hardly we, i did not have any uh, i had very few um uh few amount uh, the amount was very less which i had with me because it was all booked so i didn't uh, bother to carry much so then i uh, how god provided because the word was coming again and again trust in the lord at all times and then the lord provided and brought us home the god god leads the spirit of god engages with your mind and the thoughts come into your mind again and again and it it comes with the word of god the word of god and the spirit of god go together my friend sometimes uh we go only with the spirit if the if the uh, what the spirit says is contrary to the word of god i don't think that is the right spirit because it cannot the word uh, the it, the spirit of god cannot contradict the word of god so we need to be careful when we take in uh the word we also see a number of disciples were uh, what all uh, what kinds of uh, jobs needed the power of the holy spirit maybe you are thinking we need the power of the holy spirit if you are an evangelist or if you are a preacher or if you know need to go in the power of the holy spirit and uh, uh, do mighty works for him yes that is needed but Uh, uh listen to this in those days acts uh, chapter 6 it says in those days when the number of disciples was increasing the hellenistic jews among them accompanied against uh, complained against the hebraic uh, jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food so the 12 gathered all the disciples together and said it won't be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of god in order to wait on tables not in any way demeaning what they had to do but they said they had uh, the priority brothers and sisters choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the spirit and wisdom we will turn this responsibility over to them and will give our attention to prayer and ministry of the word here we see that uh, people who are waiting at the table and uh, for waiting at the table they are choosing people full of the holy spirit and wisdom and the apostles were uh, uh, clearly not interested in exercising the absolute power that often leads to corruption they were happy to decentralize power and control what a contrast with many churches uh where pastors want to be one one man band controlling every aspect of the church's life if he cannot do it himself he makes sure that his wife and children are given positions of influence such uh, nepotism uh, ruins the church the apostles made no mention of the relations when they gave the believers responsibility for appointing office bearers the only criteria they laid down uh was that the appointees should have a good reputation as people who were full of spirit and wisdom 
Today, uh, we are familiar with the concept of church election. The congregation nominate deacons and their appointment is then ratified by elders or bishops. Perhaps the biggest difference between the election in the early church and the present church are the eligibility and criteria. In the early church, even those appointed to such a menial task as serving food were required to have the highest qualifications in terms of fullness of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. By contrast, in today's church, caste, gender, community, ties and money appear to play a more important role than character or reputation in determining who is appointed to a position. What a pity it is. We forget character. We forget the Holy Spirit. We, we forget people who are filled with the Holy Spirit. And we look at people who probably are influential. All seven men whom the congregation chose had Greek names, were Greek-speaking Jews, chosen from the Hellenistic group to settle a complaint coming mainly from the Greek-speaking widows. This approach ought to be considered when problems arise in churches today. The people who have the grievance should be actively involved in the plans to address the issue. The apostles invested the seven deacons with authority by laying hands on them, thereby commissioning them for the task. Two of the seven were Stephen and Philip, appeared later in Acts in important roles. Like churches today, the early church had its share of problems. There were cases of corruption and dishonesty and group conflicts. We have seen instances of these in the previous in, uh, the previous chapters of Acts. The leadership, however, was strong, proactive, and far-sighted, and they acted promptly to quell corruption and diffuse internal tension. As a result, the church grew, and many of the priests in Jerusalem also became Christians. Now, uh, we also see that uh, uh, in uh, Romans 8, if you turn with me from 12 onwards, it says, Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it is not to the flesh to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But it is by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, and you will live. That's what Paul says in uh, his uh, epistle in, uh, to the Romans. And uh, he says, for those who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves, so that you live in fear again. The Spirit you received uh, about your adoption to sonship, and by Him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit Himself testifies with the Spirit, we are God's children. Now if we are God's children, then we are heirs and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in the suffering, in order that we may also share in His glory. The greatest uh, uh, reward Christians can expect uh, is to become heirs of God, so that whatever belongs to God is also theirs. However, the first condition of receiving this blessing is to be in the realm of the Holy Spirit, who is referred to here in three different ways, as the Spirit, the Spirit of God, and the Spirit of Christ. In 8.9 we see this. By equating the Holy Spirit with the Spirit of God and the Spirit of Christ, Paul shows that he has no doubt that Christ is God himself. The Holy Spirit works on behalf of God the Father and on beha behalf of Christ the Son. Where the Holy Spirit is working, love, holy living, uh, spiritual gifts, spiritual knowledge, and power are the outcome. Living in, in the realm of the Spirit, or in other words, uh, being controlled by the Holy Spirit, guarantees that a believer belongs to Christ. Are you being controlled by the Holy Spirit? Are you living a life which is led by the Holy Spirit? Or are you doing things of the flesh? Are you catering to the flesh? Belonging to Christ does not absolve the Christian uh, from some human consequences of sin. All will die physically, whether you are a believer or not. Yes, we are, all have sinned. So, however, 
how are the difference between the others and uh, the believer is that they have received eternal life because they have accepted Christ righteousness in growing believers the sinful nature should become weaker and weaker until it totally disappears at the physical death at the same time the traits of eternal life should get stronger and stronger and uh, a climaxing in the resurrection of the body uh, after physical death the agent of resurrection of the believer is god himself who raised jesus christ from the dead the believer's resurrection body is uh, will not be like that of lazarus who died came back to life and died again no this will live forever the believer's resurrected bo- body uh, uh, will be like christ after his resurrection glorious unlimited by walls or barriers but still recognizable the believer's resurrection is possible only because christ rose from the dead and that is what we see in doing this he became the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep first implies that uh, there are others to follow we as believers follow him christians have an obligation to live according to Christ's will because Christ has given us the new life uh, through his own death uh, he can uh, expect the rescue to live as he wants not according to the flesh but according to the spirit obeying the holy spirit assures eternal life it also guarantees that christians are children of god just as good children obey their parents so christian should obey the holy spirit who makes the commands of god the father known paul has previously described the holy spirit as encouraging people to live according to his guidance persuading believers to set their minds on things that please god are we doing things that please god or are we doing things that please the flesh and direct, directing them towards meaningful living and peace belonging to christ means living according to the holy holy spirit the holy spirit helps christian become god's children now a uh, paul says uh, paul's uh, culture here he adopts uh, the adoption he says they have all the rights of the uh, children and that we will be heirs and co-heirs with Christ the bible does not regard everyone as automatically god's child only those who have received forgiveness of sins by accepting jesus sacrifice on the cross can claim to be sons and daughters of god because they are sinless as he is because of what he has done not because of what we have done children of god should have some traits as the father at least in miniature form now uh how do we know where we stand are we being led by the spirit or are we being led by the flesh there seems to be uh a conflict in our lives sometimes we see the conflict in our lives what is happening there there is a conflict uh between the good and the bad uh how do we know where we stand uh now if you turn with me to uh, galatians chapter 5 verse 16 following you will understand this uh so i say walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of flesh for the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh they are in conflict with each other so that you are not to do whatever you want but if you are led by the spirit you are not under the law so what what does it mean walk by walking by the spirit what are the acts which we uh, do when we walk by the spirit and what are the acts what are the deeds which we do if we desire uh, flesh the acts of flesh are obvious sexual immorality impurity and debauchery idolatry witchcraft hatred discord jealousy fits of rage selfish ambition dissensions factions envy drunkenness orgies and like i warn you as i did before 
that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. It says in uh, Galatians 5, 19 to 21, if you read it, meditate and see where you are, whether these uh, characteristics are part of your life. In 22 and 20 to 26, we read, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such thing there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. What a way it contrasts with uh, the Spirit of, uh, uh, or the Holy Spirit and uh, being led by the flesh. What are you being led by today? There's a story of this uh, old man who had a white dog and a black dog. He used to take it to different villages and uh, he used to bet. Uh, always the uh, dog on which he bet won. If he bets on the black dog, the black dog will win. If he bets on the white dog, the white dog will win. So they were wondering and people would lose to him. They would bet and they would lose. He went to village after village. But there was one person who always followed him. And then one day he asked him, how do you, how are you able to say? Because both were equally ferocious, both were equally strong. But what he said on that day happened. How do you do that? He asked. He said, it's very simple. What, when I want the white dog to win, I feed the white dog and I starve the black dog. And then he says, when I want to, uh, the black dog to win, I feed the black dog and I starve the white dog. So that is how the secret. Similarly, when we feed uh, our flesh, our lives with flesh and uh, uh, the acts of the flesh, we see that that will gain control of us. But if you feed on the word of God, but if you feed, you surround yourself with the people of God, and when you begin to worship God, and when the Spirit of God is with you, uh, the, the fruit of the Spirit, like love, joy, and peace will surround you. So be sure that you're, being, you're feeding on the word. What goes in uh, is uh, uh, very important. What do you see? What do you hear? What do you listen to is very important in your life. So what goes in? transforms you into what you are, some of the things which you learn, some of the uh, things which you watch on television, some of the things which you watch or read or on your uh, internet or on your mobile, whatever you do, be careful about what goes in because that can change your character, that can change your behavior, uh, some for good, some for bad. Make sure you do things which make you better which draw you closer to, your, to God so that God's name will be uh, glorified and that is what we want to see. So even today, as we are uh, uh, seeing how God wants us uh, to be His children, God wants us to be led by the Holy Spirit, God wants us not to gratify the desires of the flesh, but to walk by the Spirit. Help us... Uh, Shall we ask God to fill us with the Spirit that we would hear? The Spirit of God will enable us to walk. It, it is not easy to walk this walk. But then when we have the Spirit of God, He will enable us. He will direct us and He will lead us and He will use us for His kingdom. Shall we look to the Lord in prayer? Lord and Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this day. Lord, thank you for your word. Lord, I pray that we will not uh, live according to gratify the desires of the flesh of Father, but we'll walk uh, by the Holy Spirit of Father. Help us to be led by the Holy Spirit. I pray that you will teach us by your word and your spirit to lead uh, our lives which are pleasing in your sight, where the fruit of the Spirit is seen in our lives of Father, so that people who see us will see Christ in us, and that your name will be glorified in our lives. I pray for everyone who is watching now, O oh Father. I pray that you will fill them with your Spirit, O oh Lord. Anoint them afresh. And Lord, help your Spirit to guide them on a daily basis so that they will lead uh, them into true righteousness 
and Lord that they will bring glory to your name. This I ask in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. Till we meet again next week.